everybody and assalamu alaikum welcome to another episode of happy chirp um today my guest is my niece hmm ha <laughs> <laughs> uh so hafsa is um my niece from my husband's side so she is the daughter of my husband's eldest sister mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. and um how old are you hapu i just turned 22 Yeah, and you think it's not very nice. That's because <laughs> uh, that's because Muzammil, uh, Muzammil's elder sister is much much older to him. Uh, so that is why we have a twenty-two year old Hafsa. And you're my niece, shortiest momani. Yes, she calls me shorty momani. <laughs> um, so Hapu is visiting from Hapu. Hafsa is. <laughs> visiting from uh United States mm-hmm. and um that's where you've lived all your life? Um no, okay. I live I was born North Carolina and then we moved to Canada and then Okay, I moved so back you to US, so you huh? lived in Canada as well. Huh? Yes. Huh? Right. North America. <laughs> born huh, North America. Huh. Huh. Okay. So um ha- so because of that, you know, you are Pakistani mm-hmm. but you've like lived um your life abroad um i'm sure there's a lot of like layers to that it's not that simple you know yeah yeah so um how has that been for you like the cultural difference and how do you feel about it now that you've grown up and you look back how do you feel about that growing up there yeah i feel like I had a very big transformation over time in general. Mm. So basically when I think back at my time like when I was very young, I used to be very like you know like half cultured. Ki aapko pata hai ki aapko mehndi lagani hoti hai, Eid kuch cheez hoti hai, but then it wasn't I didn't know anything about Pakistan. I knew three things existed. I knew Pakistan, Canada, and Houston. That was it. These are the three things. Mm. So I didn't have that big of an understanding mm. and then as i was you know growing up in elementary school um uh, i think I, it was that point where i was like more rejecting the culture because you're trying to assimilate into the culture that you're in mm. which is just becoming more i guess like whitewashed or americanized which mm. is fine for anyone who does do it but then again there came that point where I still had things that I enjoyed about, you know, Pakistani culture, Desi culture. Jo ek cheez hoti thi ki Eid har waqt aati thi. So that was like a reminder each year, you know, ke Ramadan Eid, getting back into that zone. Mm. But then I mean, it was different like I said when I was in Canada, we were still in a very Desi community. Uh, so you were connected. We were so connected. So it wasn't that disconnect came when I moved to America and when I started public school in like 5th grade. then uh, um because i still had desis early america but when i went there it was all white people hmm. so that's where it was obviously they're like oh you don't know what aeropostale abercrombie is and i was like no <laughs> i was like i wore a uniform i don't know what this stuff is you know yeah. and then it just became kid just try to be like them like why are you trying to be different and then it didn't help cuz like we were shy when we were like growing up so mm. mamus all of them made fun of us ke hum kaisi tooti puti urdu bolte the na so then mero kasha my brother who dar ke kuch bhi nahi we just stopped speaking urdu like mm. we just stopped because you know at that point if you obviously if you hear someone making fun of you you're just not going to try you're like oh well i suck like huh. i'm not going to do it huh. so that's why i think i told you earlier ke jab main high school mein thi mm. i finally was getting back into my culture a little bit because mm. then when there was like one of my friends moved and she had lived in pakistan for 5 years mm. so she began like speaking urdu just to, like say things like oh tumne ye kiya tha tumne ye dekha tha or whatever or phir i like you know respond a little and after 2 years of that phir urdu aa gayi thi and i was and also watching bollywood movies which i know is hindi but it mm. helped a lot uh-huh. ke, for understanding mm. so that's just mainly learning language and stuff like that but mm. in terms of actual like culture the difference in that is more seen i feel like when i'm older because i didn't see it as much when i'm younger because mm. at that point you're navigating your identity so usme you're having to figure out okay like american canadian pakistani jo bhi thi i had a lot of you know hats on my head Haan. at that point and so i don't know it was like figuring out when to bring out which identity mm. and 
that's when it became helpful. I guess maybe that's how it is easier to kind of have different groups of people or something like that because you know how to talk to everyone. Hmm. The people in your niche group, like we have, I guess, like different types of jokes that might be more catered to our audience or something like that, which is what I learned in college. But then I didn't realize how much it was like, uh, what is that called? Like leaving out people that weren't of that group if mm-hmm. that makes sense mm-hmm. like how me explain oh this means this so that's why this and then you don't realize how awkward it is and stuff like that so yeah hmm. so did you ever feel um growing up in america that feel left out because of your pakistani or i feel felt different at any point different at some points yeah i think that was like middle school time you know because everyone there's some things you know like for example mm. my family at least the way that we are mm. is like i remember after fifth grade my baba was like okay like now like he explained it nicely and everything like okay now we're going to dress like a little differently that was more religion i guess but mm. still like i knew that i had like a certain level of modesty too go mm. up to and whatever mm. and then also him saying he like okay as a muslim your representation in this community so like that type of thing but the difference i guess so only like if you're saying like cultural type of thing would just be like which i thank my parents for now is like they didn't kind of let me grow up too quickly mm. kid i got to take my time living in that age mm. where not everyone else is always trying to like get ahead so quickly you know especially in like those middle school years mm. okay i was like why can't i wear makeup why can't i like go do this or go do that or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. so i'm like i'm kind of thankful now that like my parents were the way they were because like it helped me with i don't know just like growing up steady and correct and the only i will say okay, like alhamdulillah i had a pretty good like childhood and like time in america in that sense okay i didn't have that many like hate crimes or any sort of discrimination for mm-hmm. me being pakistani mm-hmm. but there were like two or three incidents so like one was when i was in sixth grade and our teacher was showing us an exercise okay look at the tag of your shirt and see where it was made mm-hmm. and then there was a shirt that was made in pakistan and a guy was like oh watch out for some bombs in it or something like that everyone knew Aww. i was the only pakistani Aww. okay you know it's so like mm-hmm. that type of stuff or like one day i wore a hijab to school when i was in fifth grade just to see what it was like and then this kindergartner called me a rat like Aww. and i was it's that whole thing about like racism is learned type of thing yes, you know yes. so and obviously as a 10 year old like that it hurts kid anyone says stuff like you mm. stuff like that to you mm. so but otherwise like i think i'm just thankful for whoever i was surrounded by because especially during like the elections that did go on like 2016 mm. when i was in high school all of our teachers were like keeping an eye on like us to make sure we were okay mm, and everything that you were not bur- bullied or harassed uh, or, that no uh. one did anything to us because obviously there's no like at that point like there's no hiding like it's not i'm not like white passing or anything like that like you know that i'm foreign in some way mm. so in that sense i appreciate people who do stick up for others like that mm. like, yeah. so um so there's one thing that makes me really curious so there is like our south asian culture jo hamara hai Mm-hmm. and um and then there is our religion mm-hmm. you know so uh, do you think that your parents were focused on trying to um, make you understand the south asian culture or was it mostly just religion related like were they focused on like urdu and the the dk we have here and the values we have in the south asian culture or was it mostly around religion because because they're not exactly the same i mean they oh. overlap but yeah. they're not the same like you can be an completely american muslim oh yeah for with sure with no south asian um culture cultural involved. influence how uh-huh. huh? influence huh i agree so for that in my personal experience hmm. i um i think the lines were blurred 
for my family. Mm. The, I had both. Ke they did want me to have that culture. Ke we spoke like Urdu in our earlier years, but then because my sister's first language was Urdu, it hindered her school over there. So then they didn't oh. do that with me. Mm. And so that was like a difference, but we still had it, but it wasn't emphasized. But Baba really focused on religion as a thing. Mm. But then culture always like, oops, culture always gets mixed in somehow, you know? Like there's a lot of things that I feel like more recently we found out, okay, like this is like a cultural problem. This is not a religious problem mm. at all. Like mm. even, I mean, this one isn't religion whatsoever, but like, you know, the whole like, kya thing. that thing that I feel like is emphasized in every household or something. Mm. And it's something you grow up with because you're like, you need to be like a model mm. child because like, you don't want people going out. Like, why should your name be in someone's mouth? You mm. know, type of thing. Mm. So, and I will say ke something about South Asian values. Like, again, I appreciate my parents teaching me that stuff because just like those morals are nice to have. Like, I had a friend in high school that obviously like she was American. So that's when I really saw like the difference in cultures, right? Is because she would ask us to hang out and like, oh, let's do something. And like me and my Desi friends, we'd have to be like, sorry, we have a family thing. Because you know that the family is so important, the family is so important because of the importance that Pakistanis and just like Asian even, I'm not even gonna say South Asian. Mm. Asians have on family is a big thing. Mm. And like, she just didn't like get it that, for a huh? bit, huh? Uh -huh. And so then I was like, I was like, wow, like that is weird. Or like the concept of like, you turn 18, move out. Mm. For us, it's like, you stay till you're married and then you can, <laughs> then you can move out type mm. of deal. Mm. So there's definitely differences that you, Almost like you don't even know that there's a difference until you meet someone who just doesn't have that in their yeah, background. Yeah, like you don't, you, know? you don't sort of understand the value of the values mm -hmm. until you see someone who doesn't have them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you really begin to appreciate, okay, like, I have something. Like, you know, I, I like the fact that I have such a rich culture you know mm. and such a rich background mm. i can have so many things like i had to teach my my roommates who are arab i had to teach them about like you know like dholkis and like shadis kya kya hota, whatever because they want to know they were like what's a gharara like i was like oh <laughs> but that you, gharara kya hota. like this the fact that we have all these things that we can appreciate and i was like taking for granted like i remember when i was little dawate mein jaate the, my sister would wear like um, shalwar kameez and like you know desi kapre and I would just always like stubbornly wear like western clothes I was like no like I'm not gonna wear them and now it's like the other way around it's like I'm always like I was like I don't even need a party like let me just wear <laughs> my desi, desi clothes stuff, huh? let me just dress up like huh. say it yeah. hmm. but that's the thing now is like you really grow to appreciate those things hmm. that before you might have just not so on that note um, what are some things about the South Asian culture because of living uh, in America that um, you think you are so proud of having in your cultures? Like if you were to think about that, what would that be? Hmm. Wow, I really do need to think. <laughs> <laughs> Could be anything, like things that you were so, so happy to have in our culture that you genuinely enjoy or that you um, genuinely feel like they were so important like you said oh the family stuff family was a big one but that's mm. also because I personally am very family, close family. to family oriented no? and so that's why I appreciate that part a lot mm. and then I don't know I think it is just like that feeling of togetherness and also um, I think respect I feel like that's something that it might not be generally said but I feel like our culture does emphasize it a lot it's like you respect your elders but even if it's someone your age like you're supposed to like greet everyone like kindly and like when people come to your house you're supposed to like you know like offer them water or whatever like the thing is like basic etiquette mm. is something that i feel like is not taught anymore mm. and i feel like it's something that is in our um culture, culture. and mm. so that is something i appreciate it, it teaches you how to be a good person mm. albeit if people follow it or not because like i know there's that whole other side that you know like it can be the complete opposite but if we're talking about the good side of pakistan there are people like that that still do exist you know like a chin san mm. <laughs> so, yeah. and how do you think like south asian culture is 
seen in the U.S.? Lack of better words, toxic, which is really <laughs> sad. It's just what everyone says. At my university, I was like president of our Pakistan club over there. So I'd have to hear a lot of different sides. I had people that were super involved, just like I was, like super into the culture and just so happy. And other side, like it's important though to take in like, you know, different perspectives and stuff. So they would be saying how like, which I guess I understand at the same time is like, I guess maybe like overbearing parents type of thing, like helicopter parents always just watching you, always like, you know, wanting you to succeed, which is fine, but then like really pushing you. Right, like pressuring you. Pressure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like there's just a lot of aspects that people find toxic, I feel mm -hmm. like. And I feel like the perception is also messed up, which I get upset about is that if you enjoy Pakistani culture there as an American, people immediately dub you as Fabi, which I feel uh. like is so rude because... I was reading like an article or something that was saying that that's almost like a slur word now mm. that it's rude to consider it because like, like, why would you say that? That someone came from like their country, like look at you traveling to all these countries, like you're doing the same thing, but people mm. don't see it like that. They're mm. just like, oh, you like this so much. Wow. You're such a, you're such a fob. Like, yeah. So I just feel like that perception is really skewed and not to write it. Hmm. And, all. um, Personally, do you think that there are some things about the South Asian culture that are toxic? I do think yeah, so. Yeah, like with yeah. like what? Um I think the concept I mentioned earlier, Lokya Kenge, yes. I think it'll stop you from living your life a lot because mm. you're gonna be so worried about what other people are thinking, not to mention comparison is a very big thing that like I've just noticed even just on my trip here, like if someone starts asking you randomly personal questions, it's like, yo, they're about to compare you to their kid or they're going to say something. Okay, you already know at that point. Not mm. so I think that's just something that like sadly might just be rooted. Like or I guess like gossip. I don't know if that is all in the same thing. It's kind of like the same. Mm. But that part I really just don't enjoy mm. whatsoever mm. i know there's more i just i'm trying to think mm. um do you think there are like um rishte complexion oh god yeah there okay see like there's so much stuff that just goes over your head because you just get so annoyed you try to forget about it mm. so like one thing that i hate is that the type of person i am mm. is i always say okay like let everyone do what they're doing mm. it's not my place to judge right like it really is not mm. and i would never ever put someone down for like how they look like you know that saying that says if they can't fix it in five minutes don't bring it up don't because it up. that's What's true the point? and it's What's and the point? half of it doesn't need fixing why is it that people say curly like yeah they look like a witch or something like that why don't you straighten your hair mm -hmm. why Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, like that is messed up. What you said about complexion. I find that so rude. Kid. People would just like, it's like they're analyzing you. Like, they're just like looking you up and down. They're like, oh, okay. Like, like, like even though I'm like still brownish. Like, I know I'm brown, but like, okay. Like for like Maria, like my sister, who's like a little bit darker, it would make me really angry whenever anyone would say something. Or like when we went to the parlor for her function recently and i literally was like i was like i will make sure that they don't make you like white like yeah. why should yeah why is that such a like the gora complex here is yeah. very real mm. and like i think i even tried it. i was 11 mm. why am i thinking about that stuff when i'm 11 yeah. like oh i look like this mm. because it's just like ingrained in our society like this bad fair this bad. is better fair is better fair is better yeah. huh. and the same thing with like <clears throat> rishta culture like you said sometimes it's fine I'm not going to write it off completely. Like some people do it like the respectful right way. Hmm. But the one where it's like a fish market and it's basically like these people are just being like paraded around and people are just like, 
literally it's just like a it's a competition of like looks and like whatever like i just think that's so it's just so disgusting to me Mm. okay like it's just like give me another one give me another one not good enough it's not it's dehumanizing to a certain extent yeah it's like oh you're picking out objects yeah exactly (laughs) not humans at all yeah and it's just crazy to me that it's still happening like that like Mm. the fact that people speak like that we're so entitled like we talk about entitlement a lot like i think people are so entitled to just having like whatever they might be mm. that doesn't, doesn't matter, matter huh? i need the perfect like whatever aap jaise marzi ho lekin meri biwi aisi honi chahiye ya mere beti ka shohar aisa hona chahiye aur yeah double like standard that. bhi ek cheez hoti hai that's another very toxic thing is like men so <laughs> sorry men <laughs> <laughs> not uh, not like everyone obviously like i my i love my brother like i love my mom who's like they're all <laughs> sweeties mm. um but obviously there's the, the type of people and like uh, every all of them are guilty of these same things right it's like at some point you're going to be a mama's boy at some point you have these things that brown culture i'm telling you can implement karte mm. into these people and it's also their own responsibility as like a parent or someone to just teach yourself to get out of that as well like make mm. sure you respect women make sure you do this stuff not that like oh well it's not my duty so like you go clean up mm. you go do this like mm. why are you being so stubborn about that mm. you know mm. like i know people like that in america that sit there like backwards minded i guess like i don't know that's also very odd to me so what is the since we s- talked about rishta culture um mm. what is the rishta culture like over there is it just like over here as in like because obviously you have like little desi communities right and not like mm. lots and lots of options like people have here because everybody here is the same so wahan par what is it like with the south asian people and the aunties and the looking for rishte mm i feel like like you said there's like tiny communities like spaced around and stuff and usually what i've noticed is mm-hmm. like they'll be like rishta aunties here and there such at the much jab aap masjid jaate hain you'll see someone like when they start asking questions again you know that they're I like asking i think over there are masjids like the hot spots for kind of looking for it feels like it sometimes like and obviously shadis shadis huh. mein everyone has that joke of like oh like if someone's asking about you like get out of there <laughs> like you know like uh. so that type of thing is definitely over there but i i guess the only like difference it's just not as like normalized i feel like i don't know like not that it's like super different like you still have people from pakistan that you're getting rich this here but it's like those you know those whatsapp groups that are like send they'll be like oh if you know someone tell me so like people are just asking like their friends to hmm. like find people and i mean i guess it's kind of like the same here but like seeing like you know like nani do like rich this stuff over there that that felt different because mm-hmm. i was like this it just seemed weird like so over there from i don't know just what i've seen i haven't seen a lot but like what i have seen it's like not as like formulaic maybe like over here it's all like bio data ye 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 like aapko pata hai ki aap kya dhoond rahe hain kya dekh rahe hain like whatever over there it's kind of like i guess mainly people try to like look for themselves if they can mm. and if they don't i feel like they go into like that system unless it's like family friends or something mm. because i just don't see it's not as prevalent as it is here mm. that's the thing like i just have not seen it like that before mm. uh so growing up did you have a lot of white friends or it was always desi or like i think when i was younger it was more white uh, white mm. and then as i got older it was more like cuz that's that? when you meet the your brown people okay. and like your muslim friends and whatever so basically when you're younger you're just this is also the beauty of being younger though you can just be friends with anyone anyone and I it's think, fine yeah because you're growing up in your i guess your identity is not so hard stuck yet yeah. right so and then slowly you realize okay i'm i'm south asian and i'm brown and i huh. have these values and this stuff so you can't really just i guess make white friends Is? I mean, I wouldn't say it's a hindrance, but I feel like when I'm older, like when I was in university, I like it's not like you can just randomly like befriend somebody. Like you know, like you needed kind of like a reason, you know? So then I joined like 
two niche clubs that I knew, like the Muslim club and the Pakistani club, because I was like, these are the two people that I'll probably have to associate with, you know? And that's where I made like, <clears throat> sorry, that's where I made like my whole group at that point, mm. because I think it's a lot easier when you have a common background at that point to make friends, especially like you said this whole time, when you both know you're living abroad, you have that commonality that like, hey, we are like these little fish in this pond, but we should stick together because we're both Desi or mm. we're both Muslim. Like something I mentioned a long time earlier was the thing that I love about like when we're, we were in college and we had like 300 people classes. If you saw another Muslim in there, you went and sat with that one Muslim because you were like, we can help each other. Yeah, when we need each other because you're a huh. minority, no? Exactly. So you yeah. need each other. Versus like, I was, I think I was talking to someone who goes to school here in the office and they were saying, okay, like, oh, well, everyone here is Pakistani. Everyone's here is Muslim. So like, or not everyone, but like, you know what I mean? Like, there's not exactly that case that you can just gravitate towards mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And then, so even though I had those... Uh, they see Muslim friends, both of them. It was when I started working at university. Mm. That's when I started branching out of my group because obviously, you know, there were so many different types of people working there. And I was just like, see, obviously it's not a barrier. There's no problem with me making friends with other people. It's just that whole thing of like, where do you meet them? What's that commonality that's bringing you together at that mm -hmm. point, you know? And so I do have one, like, you know, like a token white friend, token Asian friend. Mm -hmm. I have like one, one <laughs> that I'm close to that I would say. Mm -hmm. And like them, I appreciate a lot because like, it's kind of nice to have that, like, you know, that change and like that thing that like I, it's like normalcy because, you know, you're just friends. Like it's not, your identity isn't just that one thing. Right. That's the thing that I feel like does get stuck on people is that, you feel like you have to brand yourself. Huh. And the thing is, you're made up of so many different things. You don't have to be just one thing. Yeah, you don't. So That's interesting. Yeah, huh. that's true. Yeah. So what about like Western influences? Because, you know, your values, again, are very different because of your culture and your religion mm -hmm. compared to most people around. So what was it like navigating through that? Because what was probably considered normal around you was not something that was considered acceptable or normal in your family or in your household. So what was that like? That... Did you ever feel like stuck between two worlds where, you know, oh, uh -huh. things when are so normal, like it's so considered so normal outside of my house. But when I step inside, it's like, no, like this is not normal. Yeah. So yeah. there were moments like that. I feel like I guess where you'd get frustrated that like, why does everyone get to do this and I don't type yeah, of thing? Yeah. So it would be, I mean, obviously it was kind of like stupid things when you're like younger. So I was just like, oh, like why are people allowed to like, I don't know, like for when we started like very younger, it was like going out after school and like staying out late type of thing. We weren't allowed to do that. Hmm. We had to be home by a hmm. certain time. Hmm. Your school friends are your school friends. You don't need the after school friends type of thing. Hmm. And then it was like, obviously like early high school was like, why can they date? Why am I not allowed to date? Why can they like somebody? Why can they be friends with a boy? Blah, blah, blah type of stuff. So then that was obviously a whole conversation in and of itself of just like, learning that like boundary and whatever and then i mean eventually like like i said like i appreciated semi strictness from my parents because then later it created morals of my own like i'm allowed to have friends of any gender now like of course yeah because that's the thing is it's just trust like i appreciate having to kind of like i guess like hold out like that because mm. then it is just like twisted teenage whatever in your mind get like oh this is like new and it's exciting so like this is my person like no no they're not mm. kid at that point you know mm. so that i understood or obviously in america the heavy um thing of uh like drugs and like alcohol alcohol and bad things and so <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, just, mama don't watch this i'm no kidding <laughs> so, i'm 22 guys <laughs> and so like obviously when i started college i actually had a very big culture shock when i got there because i grew up in a bubble basically okay. that i was i feel like i wasn't as open-minded when i started college and i'm mm. super open-minded now that i'm out okay is that when i got there and i obviously like saw people like 
you would see people drinking and you'd see like you know like drugs and it would be then it was people you knew and then it was that type of thing you're just like, like what you're like this isn't allowed like, like what? <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> yeah no i wasn't allowed to do anything so i was just like i was like this is very weird and so then that was a whole learning process as well or like people like okay i'm not some like sheikha or anything so like but like people dating or whatever like i used to be like oh my god like whatever and then over time you're like whatever that's their it's not my thing to say anything or mm. whatever and half- so by by people da- obviously you you always saw people dating but mm. like you mean people dating from your community yes, or like from my community your religion that your was something that you never saw openly i feel like and then you were like oh people are doing it so openly and like mm. wtf What's yeah what what are you doing uh-huh. like, and then i'd be i thought we weren't allowed <laughs> it's huh. like where's this rule book like, uh-huh. so that was like a lot of the figuring stuff out now is like okay well all the rules that i thought were so clearly laid out like they're not or yeah. like the same thing that we talked about like food restriction that one's a religion thing but uh-huh. like again like figuring out that like the lines were blurred at this point Mm -hmm. that like okay there's a lot of different ways you can go or like the type of people that would go to college dressed one way but would change when they get over there because they don't want their parents to know that type of thing like rebellion all this stuff and then so it was just figuring out where you fit in that spectrum like I still the people that were on super extremes like I let them do them and I didn't participate in that but like i was like you do you mm. and then for me i was just like chilling in the middle like mm. i was just navigating i mm. guess but you the- were less scarred by slowly by this yeah thing. like first it was so jarring that i would just <laughs> like go in shock and just go back to my dorm room i was like i can't do with this like what is this it took like three four months of that first semester and then like gradually I was just I don't know I don't even know how I like I unlearned things and then became like more open-minded because like I genuinely was so different when I started or like I still don't like curse or anything but I used to literally like flinch if someone cursed and then people like cursed so openly over there and like now I'm like you were like dude mein dhuli hui bachi <laughs> Literally. exposed to the realities of the world uh-huh, because i like for you guys who don't know i went to the college where you have to move out and like live in the apartment uh, and everything mm. and so my sister went to the one case she could just drive and come home so i knew i had to go there because i knew how dependent i was on my family and i was like i can't just live like that forever i'm not gonna grow and mm. so i need to take this step. i need to take this step because otherwise i was going to just be like I don't know, like, I knew that I was just going to be dependent on my family, and then I would just always be, like, I knew they were there, so I wouldn't, like, do anything myself, like, but this one was such a good forced change, like, as much as, like, okay, the first few months, like, I would, like, cry a bunch, and I was just, like, homesick, like, I'd call my mom all the time, but, like, it got better. It got better. Yeah. So, a lot of the times what happens is, okay, when you are so, like, sheltered and so innocent or like you feel like oh you have to go by the rule book Mm. and everybody does that and then a lot of people like that when they go to college and they're away from their family and then they see all of these people doing all of these things that were always considered like so wrong and so unacceptable yeah so a lot of people like that actually sort of get explored and then they do all these sorts of things Mm -hmm. right yeah what was that but, but you said that you know you were like okay i'm not doing all this right so how were you able to make those boundaries for yourself or those limitations for yourself like hey i'm not going there hmm. i know all these people are but like how consciously did you do that or what i think it was a lot of like it was like a lot of like reminding yourself of like what is the stuff that you're firm on you know what i mean and i always was firm on like i like will not drink i will not like so do you drugs, had like your that own principles thing. i had I, this I told, see, huh. remember i once told you that um you're just like me when i was younger huh, you said you see a lot of you yeah. in me. <laughs> yeah so i was like that as well like at a very young age um i literally made principles for myself that mm-hmm. you know Um, and that was at a younger age where I was like, you know, when I grow up, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do this and I'm never going to do this, you mm-hmm. know. And I made those principles so consciously that when I grew up, no matter what kind of people I was surrounded with, literally, or whatever they did, mm-hmm. I was 
it was just not difficult for me to keep those boundaries or to have those limits because I had so consciously decided and made up my mind about what I wanted or exactly so early on up there like you had it for yourself yes yeah yes, yeah and I think I feel like that did make like a big difference because obviously there were opportunities yeah. my roommate was white yeah see see that's the difference because huh. some people never get the opportunity that's why they are so innocent hmm. right no but, this but is like they, knowing but when like, they get the opportunity it's like those boundaries are gone yeah it's just like oh you have the opportunity to do it but then there are a few people who are just like hey i have the opportunity but mm-hmm. this is what i choose not to do and you don't have somebody doesn't have to tell you that yeah exactly like me knowing that like because you know our, our rooms were like split like this you know like she had her fridge i had my fridge there's literally vodka in that freezer. Uh, I didn't touch it. I uh, was like, I was like, okay, you can you can drink in this room, but just make sure I'm gone. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see it. That's mm-hmm. like because I was like, it's not my. I can't like stop her or anything, but like, you know, like just don't do it in front of me. Which, <clears throat> and so and, and luckily she did respect all that stuff. She's like, okay, I know how you are and whatever. So like, I will just make sure you don't see anything, whatever. Mm-hmm. And like same with drugs. Like I got offered pop brownies all the time (laughs) i didn't take it because i was like i'm like i don't know i feel like the way that people acted when they were drunk was like i don't know off a put off you yeah you didn't yeah and besides that i was like i was like okay y'all were like kind of mean when you were sober and now that you're drunk you're nice and you're matching my personality so i was like i was like this is fine like you do whatever like i'm you know but again like so you were like you had a lot of these people around who were doing all these things, but you were never choosing for yourselves. But in a very non-judgmental way, right? Like you weren't like like did your friends or people around you ever felt like you were too judgmental or they couldn't be around you because or was were you like very open, like you guys do it and I have like no issues with it, but like I'm not gonna do it. That first year that I told At you. At first about, you did have I issues was, with I had it. issues with like yeah. everything. And then I think as time went on, I didn't. But then also those people I distanced myself from. Okay. Because my closest people, like, I'll still associate with them. And I'll be like, you know, hi, bye, whatever. Mm. Like, I'll still be nice to them. But I just don't surround myself as closely with those people anymore, if that makes sense. Like, Mm. I feel like that was just something that I noticed recently. That, like, the people I kept close to me were people that did share my morals and principles Mm -hmm. but not in a way that like oh those people are bad like they're not bad at all like i still am friends with them they just have a different lifestyle and that's fine like that's okay yeah yeah yeah. so i feel like that's just all that happened and i don't like judge anyone for that like i just i think i just know my place and like what i'm comfortable with so i won't put myself in an uncomfortable situation Mm, okay that's smart like mm -hmm. that's a smart way to Live your life happily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Positive vibes only. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, um, you there are a couple of things that you did recently. One of the things that you did was a thesis, your thesis. And then also your interest in learning the Urdu language. Yes. So, can you tell us a bit about your thesis? Why you chose to do that and what it meant? um because obviously people listening have no idea or no context so like uh, like properly explain and Mm -hmm. then why did you like decide to go and learn urdu suddenly okay so background Hmm. i started college as a business major decided i don't like Hmm. business and Mm, then i switched to an interdisciplinary art and design major Hmm. this is also a conversation i wanted to have so good you brought that up (laughs) (laughs) and so then i um in this last year we have to create our senior thesis which i realized in the last year all of my work became very culture focused and it was never like that before Hmm. and so for my thesis, she kept on asking, what's a theme that's close to your guys' heart? You have to focus on that. You have to do that. And I always wondered, like, oh, man, like, I don't know what I'm close to like that. And then it mm. was obvious. It just became obvious, you know. So my thesis was called A Peak in Pakistan. Mm. And it was eight self-portraits of me. And then I put double exposure of pictures from Pakistan in, like, 
in spurt inter oh my god intertwined into those photos mm. so it was your portraits with images of pakistan yes in it. typically i had some sort of dupatta or something on so i would have my face drawn but then the dupatta would have like faisal masjid in it or like the bhadshai masjid like it had architectural landmarks or some something that i associate with pakistan because it was telling of my experience there so the whole reason for doing that was one i've been trying for years to try and come back to pakistan it's been seven years since i came this time mm. and so every year i tried to plan a trip and it didn't happen so i think i was very chalked up on nostalgia first of all mm. and then just realizing when i was like talking to my friends and i told you that more recently i was more into my culture whenever people would ask me like well what is it like what do you like about it like you know what's so good about pakistan so then that's what got me thinking is like what is it that keeps me you know like what is it that makes it home mm. and it was that concept of home of seeing that like okay i have my home in america mm. like i have that but then this is a different kind of home like what's the like in your heart type of thing mm. and that's what i was exploring was that concept of like not just your physical home but mm. the things combined that can create that space for you mm. so i had like the experience of going to a bazaar i had the i had mangoes because nana would make me mango lassi every time i came and i had like a lot of architecture because i would love looking at buildings and stuff like that when i did come here when i was younger and then i had three cities i had islamabad karachi and lahore which are the three that i've basic but that i've been to can't to me pakistan aati thi so these were my big showcase things mm. Mm. and um and why did you decide to learn urdu and for urdu i i mean you knew how to you understood urdu mm -hmm. and i had my my tooty pooty urdu like i had it huh. but i really wanted to write urdu like i mm. wanted to have i was like i'm so close ke mujhe I know how to read Arabic but I can't you know read Urdu. Mm. And again it was like that dedication at that time that was the year that I became president of the Pakistani club like I was just at my high for Pakistan stuff mm. that I was just like I like I shouldn't stop myself from learning more when I have this opportunity in front of me mm. because no one else is going to sit there and like actually teach me you know mm. like if my college is offering a semester i might as well take it mm. and i think i just had that i don't know i just had it in me that i knew that i wanted to learn this language because i feel like it's important to pass on which is why whenever you guys are talking i don't know a word i always ask even though like uh, you're like the, uh, yeah like, some really funny words you choose to ask <laughs> because they don't i don't know what they are like i forgot ziba or whatever it was <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> But anyway, like the point being that like I know it'll make me look silly or like whatever, yeah, but it's good you asked. Though. It's the I importance really like of that. knowing. Like mm. that curiosity is worth it. Like mm. invest in that. Mm. So, and I've always loved learning languages. Like I've taken like what four or five now. Like I have a I love learning languages. But obviously this one is different because like I know I'm not the best at it, but I still want that some of it would be able to be passed down you know what i so mean so now like, you're able to read and write urdu yes but it takes me time but i can do it but you can do it mm. Mm. like when we whenever we drive and stuff i'll always try to read the signs and so that's why when there was a stop sign i was like does that say aista like ah. i was like kya likha yeah i always try to read them mm. Mm. that's good yeah mm. okay so you mentioned that um you switched your major mm -hmm. and you've always been into art so why did you go for business first when you knew art is something that was close to your heart you love doing and then why did you make the switch then so when i was even applying to colleges i applied to an art college and i applied to uga which was like public you know college whatever so i thought that if i just whichever one i get into that's the one that's either business or art that's what's going to happen When I got into UGA, I was I got into both of them. I knew that when I picked business, I told myself that okay, it's practical and that like it's good for like the future and that Getting if I Getting a job. Ah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Like again, this was that stereotypical South Asian pressure mentality, kind of like huh? the mentality and pressure on myself though. Like alhamdulillah, I don't think my parents ever said anything, but I put it on myself. Okay, I was like I need to be a good 
daughter so i need to do something practical mm. and then i also knew that if i do this that means my art will be more appreciated mm. because i will be so much happier when i get the time to do it and like there will be like a hundred business people but one artist in the room and that mm. will be me mm. like it'll make me different that mm. was what i told myself mm. and it did that first i spent two two years as a business major and i did have that going for me but Obviously, I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't clicking. Like when I did accounting, when I was doing those things, it didn't make sense to me. So then when I was switching my major, I was so scared to go talk to Baba. I was like, what am I going to tell him? Okay, like he he wants me to do business. Da, da, da. And I went and I was about to go talk to him. And he's just like, Hafsa, I think you should switch your major. He brought it up to me. Okay, like I think you should switch your major and do art. Mm. And I was just like, what? Because like no one here knows my baba but that was a big i was like huh like shock <laughs> moment and yeah. i was just like how and then he was saying it like he was like i like i wouldn't say it if i didn't think you could do it like mm. i think you can do it mm. and like man i about i cried that night so much i was just like wow like he he believes in me so much you know mm. and and the fact of the matter is that night was also a big oops a big transformation for me because i also realized like how open and supportive my parents are mm, in that sense. more than you thought they were mm -hmm. uh -huh. but it was also again things i imposed on myself that i was like no i need to do this for them mm. but then they were like no it wasn't even in their they're head. like you have talent like do it and i was just like oh okay nice okay <laughs> I'll, mm. I'll pursue this then like that's fine mm. and then after that like everyone around me told me they were like you look so much happier you're you're finally like you're in your element like you're doing what, what you were you meant, to do. And what you're meant to do huh? and that made such a difference like it was really just like you know like you're living that life that you were meant to live at mm -hmm. that point like before that it just felt like a trial or it just felt like oh like this is a filler mm -hmm. for what's supposed to happen mm -hmm. and that was like a really nice shift because i don't regret my business stuff because i still enjoy that, practical mm. knowledge like that was really helpful mm. but the creative side was also really fun to mm. explore yeah and like now that you've graduated what do you want to do with that degree what do you want to do i'm hoping inshallah inshallah to get to work in like the cartoon or animation industry mm. or even before that maybe just like start with like graphic design at like branding firms or something but honestly in this trip there were just like a lot of realizations of like like side things to do like I think I'd always like want to freelance and like make things on my own as well whenever mm. I got them if I felt like taking an order mm. but then also just knowing that there's just no there's no end to like what you're capable of doing mm. so I know I have like my main big girl job but then there's always going to be like I like doing like makeup and I've also done that for people before and I know I can do like I have so much stuff that I can do mm. so I know I have that blank filler period as I'm applying and that's probably what I'll end up doing and then hopefully get into the cartoon industry mm. yeah yeah that's nice oh my god so much fun <laughs> yeah you're so lucky you're so talented <laughs> <laughs> yeah so no, are you're, you <laughs> you're super talented and I'm so glad that you chose the art and design thing because I mean, then you wouldn't have been living your true potential. Huh? Mm. Yeah. And like you have a lot of potential in, in this art thing. So thank you. good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mumani. <laughs> okay. So anything else you want to say? Hapu? I think I'm good. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to say Choti Mani? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you for coming mm. and doing this with me. I really enjoy talking to you. Oh. You know, I enjoy talking to you in general as well. <laughs> <laughs> this was forced quality time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like we talk a lot anyway. So why not just, you know, record a podcast with me? I mean, there's a lot that I knew that you could share and a lot that people would be interested in knowing because it's a completely new perspective. Like I have a lot of people coming in here, but, you know, they're all from here, living here. And this is just a very refreshing conversation for mm -hmm. us here at Happy Chirp. So thank you so much, Hapu for oh. coming and thank you so much for tuning into this episode of happy chirp hafsa is leaving soon <laughs> so, yeah. so i thought it's best to just have her now <laughs> <laughs> and i'll see you guys again soon next time in another solo podcast thank you so much and bye bye <laughs>